back. Now we're going to do a general example. It's called General Thermodynamic Processes, example one. We have a container of gas here. We are told that there's 40 moles of gas. The initial pressure of the gas is 2 times 10 to the 5th pascals. The initial volume is 0.5 cubic meters. The final volume is 1.5 cubic meters. We are told that the work by the gas is 80 kilojoules, right? Well, because the volume is increasing, the gas is doing work on the piston, right? The initial volume is 0.5 cubic meters, and the piston is rising, right? Eventually, the final volume is going to be uh, 1.5 cubic meters. So the volume is increasing threefold, right? So the gas is doing positive work. But we are told that the Q into the gas is negative 20 uh, kilojoules. That means the heat is actually escaping out of the gas, right? So we can say Q out of gas is positive 20 kilojoules, right? So the heat is escaping out of the gas while you are allowing the gas to do positive work, right? So this would be an example of a general process. It would not fit into the isothermal, isovolumic, or isobaric process, or even adiabatic, none of those specific examples. So now we are told, find the initial temperature of the gas, find the initial energy of the gas, right? And then we are told, find the final energy of the gas, E final, find the uh, final temperature, and then the final pressure, right? So let's first start out with the ideal gas law, uh, PV is equal to nRT. So we can use the, the initial pressure is 2 times 10 to the fifth, Right? The initial volume was 0.5 cubic meters. The number of moles is 40. Right? The gas constant that we're going to use is 8.31. Right? It's the metric unit of the gas constant, 8.31. And then the initial temperature, well, we're going to solve for the initial temperature right here, right? Temperature, uh, comfortable room temperature, right? Now, what's the initial internal energy of the gas? In this chapter, we're going to be uh, assuming that all the gases are monatomic, so their internal energy is going to be 3 halves nRT, right? 3 halves nRT. And then in the later chapters, I'll explain to you what will happen when we have diatomic or triatomic, right? So uh, we have your 3 halves nRT, so that we can say E initial is equal to 3 halves uh, 40, and then 8.31. And then we take the initial temperature, 300.84, okay? We multiply all this out, and then the answer we get is 149,000, 149,998.82 joules, right? So it's 149,998. Well, it's approximately 150,000, so that would be approximately 150 kilojoules, right? So we can say E initial approximately 150 kilojoules, right? Okay, so then we can use the, some of the information here and then our knowledge of the, the first law of thermodynamics, right? We can say uh, Q into gas is equal to work done by gas plus the change in internal energy of the gas. Right, so Q into gas is equal to negative 20 kilojoules, okay? So the heat is actually escaping the gas, right? The work done by the gas, we were told, was 80, right? And then the change in internal energy, well, we can solve for that, okay? So then the change in internal energy is going to be negative 20 minus 80, that's going to be negative 100 kilojoules. So that means the gas is really going to cool down. The internal energy of the gas has gone way down. Well, because the gas is already expanding, right, that tends to already make its temperature go down. And plus heat is escaping the gas that even multiplies uh, to the system, right? So that makes the uh, final temperature go down way, way down, right? So then we're going to see uh, what's going to happen here. Well, if the change in internal energy is negative 100, and then the initial internal energy is uh, 150 kilojoules, that means the final internal energy is 150 minus 150 kilojoules, right? So the internal energy goes all the way down from 150 all the way down to 50, okay? So we have here E final was, uh, is going to equal 50 kilojoules, okay? Well, now we can actually solve for 
the final temperature, right? So we can say 50 times 10 to the third, right? Because the kilo is a 10 to the third. Three halves, the number of moles, 8.31 times T final. What's going to happen? The, the final temperature is going to be one third of the initial temperature, right? Why? Because the final energy was one third of the initial energy, right? So the final temperature is going to be uh, one third of the initial, and then the initial was 300.84, right? 300.84 divided by three. Uh, then the, we can also solve for the final pressure, right? P in uh, final, V final is equal to N R T final, and then we can say P final. And then remember the final volume was 1.5. What's happening? Because the volume is increasing, that already tends to decrease the pressure, right? That tends to decrease the pressure because this volume goes down here. And then the final temperature is also way down. So that's going to cause the pressure to go all the way down too, right? P final, then we can calculate that. That's going to end up becoming 22,222. 22,222 Pascals, right? Remember the initial pressure was 2 times 10 to the fifth, which was 200,000. 200,000 pascals. So it goes from 200,000 all the way down to 22,000 pascals, right? So 200,000 pascals is two atmospheres, roughly, two times the pressure of the regular sea level atmosphere, and this is one fifth of the atmospheric pressure. So it goes from becoming two atmospheres all the way down to one fifth atmosphere, because one, because one atmosphere is approximately 100,000 uh, pascals, right? So the PV diagram for this would look like what? If we make a PV diagram for this process, you can say the volume initial was uh, 0.5 cubic meters. The volume final was uh, 1.5 cubic meters. The initial pressure was 2 times 10 to the fifth, right? And then if this is uh, 1 times 10 to the fifth, uh, what, where would 22 be? Well, 22 will be one-fifth of that, so roughly around here. So you're starting all the way here. The final volume is all approximately here. So the drop in pressure is really, really big time, like this. Okay. Uh, it goes really, really big time. And then we could also uh, write down the, uh, the heat that is escaping the gas. You can say the gas is, the heat is escaping like this, and then uh, we can write down what that heat was. And then 20 kilojoules escaped, we know the initial pressure, we know the final pressure, we know the initial volume, the final volume, and then the initial temperature and final temperature. Now, what if we make a closed circular path about, of this, right? What if the, well, the gas now goes up, right? Now we could do like an isovolumic, right? Let the gas go up, and then from there, let the gas go up, isothermally, we can say isothermally, and then we can make a complete cycle out of this. So we can combine general process, isovolumic, and isothermal, right? So how far up should we go until we make it uh, isothermal? Well, if this last process is going to be isothermal, then the temperature here should be the same as the temperature initial, right? So the temperature here should be 300.84 Kelvin, right? So we can calculate what the pressure needs to be there so that we can stop at that point and then from then on go back isothermally, right? So what should the pressure at that point be? We already know the volume is one fifth. Um, we already know the volume is 1.5, so we can put it here. Okay, so that's a pressure of 66,666. Well, that makes sense because the pressure down here was 22,222, uh, and then all that's happening is that the temperature is tripling. Everything else is staying the same, right? So the pressure goes three times more. So in the picture, I should make it, well, if this is 22,000, 44,000, 66,000. So something like a little bit lower here, okay? So to make it more reasonable. Heat into gas equals work done by gas plus change in internal energy of gas. Right? The work by the gas in the isovolumic process is zero, right? Over here. 
so this is going to be zero. Q into gas is going to be change in internal energy of the gas, which is going to be three halves N R delta T, right? Three halves the number of moles times the gas constant times the change in temperature in going from here to here, right? So then what's that going to be? Q into gas is going to be three halves the number of moles 40, 8.31. So what happened here, 100 kilojoules of heat came in. So in the picture, what does that look like? So that means the gas expanded from an initial volume of uh, 0.5 cubic meters all the way to 1.5 cubic meters, right? Then we bolted the piston, right? So bolted to the side, not allow the volume to change, right? And then we put in heat, okay? We put in heat. So because we put in heat, what's going to happen? The temperature of the gas is going to go up and the pressure is going to go up. The temperature is going to go up from 100 to 300 and the pressure is going to go up from uh, 22,000 all the way to 66,000, right? And so from there, we can then do the isothermal process. So let's calculate in the isothermal process how much heat is coming in and what the work done by the gas is, right? So remember in the theory section, I already covered the work done Work done by gas is equal to nRT ln of V final over V initial, right? So in this case, since I'm going backwards, what's happening? We're compressing the gas isothermally back to its initial state, right? So we're going from the, the initial volume, which is 1.5 cubic meters. We're going down all the way down. We're compressing it to the final volume which is 0.5 cubic meters, right? Uh, so the gas is doing negative work. So we say here work by gas is going to be uh, 40 times 8.31 times the temperature, 300.84. And then our V final is going to be 0.5 over V initial, which is 1.5. So it's going to be ln of one third. Right? So basically that's going to be work by gas is negative 40 times 8.31 times 300.84 times ln of 3. Okay, so that's kind of, so what's that, uh, what's going to be the heat into the gas or heat out of the gas? Well, we have here Q into gas equals to change in internal energy of the gas plus work done by gas. Well, in this case, the change in the internal energy of the gas is zero, right? Because the temperature is staying the same. So this one here is zero. And then Q into gas is equal to work done by gas. So Q into gas is equal to negative 109.86 kilojoules also. So what's happening? The heat is escaping. Heat is escaping. Uh, how much heat is escaping? 109.86 kilojoules is escaping, right? But during this process, heat is coming in. How much heat is coming in, right? So overall, we have uh, more uh, we have more heat escaping the system than uh, uh, than coming into the system, right? So if we applied the first law of thermodynamic to the whole process, what would the answer become? Okay. So we have here. Uh, Q into gas is equal to work done by gas plus change of internal energy of gas. So let's do here total, total, total. Okay? So what's going to happen? What's the total heat into the gas? Well, we have 100 kilojoules, right, are coming into the gas in the isovolumic process. We have 20 kilojoules of heat escaping the gas. So minus 20, right? Then we have 109 joules escaping the gas, minus 109.86 uh, kilojoules. These are all kilojoules. What's the work done total by the gas? Well, from here to here, the gas did how much work? 80 kilojoules, right? Positive 80 kilojoules, okay? And then from here to here, the gas did no work. And then from here all the way to here, how much work did the gas do? Work by gas was negative 109.86 kilojoules, right? From here back to here. 
So we say negative 109.86 kilojoules, okay? And then what's the change in internal energy of the gas? Well, you're starting at a certain temperature and you're coming back to that same temperature, right? So the change in internal energy of the gas total is zero. These two should match, and that means uh, that we have closed the whole circle, right? So you see 100 minus 20 is 80, 80 minus 109.86. So it proves that when we apply the first law to the whole process, then the two sides of the equation uh, match, and therefore we have done everything correctly, right? So next I'll do another example of a general process where I will apply the same kind of principles, but it'll be a little bit different example, okay? Thank you very much.